I'm Time Itself, and this is my Payday 2 review. Okay, let's do the It had to be one of those two. Well, I'm 100% sure it has a blue tag. All right. Left for Dead. Cops and Robbers Edition. That's how I'd describe Payday 2. Uh, you can end up killing almost as many police, FBI, SWAT teams, heck, if they're in the game, the National Guard too, as you kill zombies in Left 4 Dead. <laughs> But like Left 4 Dead, the pacing of the waves is generally very good and presents a good challenge for teams. You die, Tony. It's a lot of fun to get a crew together and go make some money. This review is somewhat critical. It's not that I dislike the game. Rather, I've had enough fun to put a fair amount of time in and really sink my teeth into and figure out where the game breaks down and where it falters. It's not a AAA title, it lacks that level of polish, so set your expectations accordingly, and it can be a lot of fun. Let's start with the console port issues, as I'm playing on 360 here. Quite honestly, everything else being equal, I expect the PC version to be better. Payday 2 seems to run on one of the versions of Valve's Source Engine, and tries to run at 60 frames per second, it's great, but sometimes slows down, and screen tearing becomes a nuisance. It looks worse at YouTube's forced 30 frames per second playback, but in large areas, the frame rate can really drop, and it's not that great. Still playable, though. A major issue is the third rate controls. First of all, the only options you have are look inversion and sensitivity. No button remapping at all. You're gonna be mailing with the right thumbstick. If you don't like it, too bad. <laughs> By far the worst issue are the look mechanics, making precision aiming very difficult and still leaving you with a very slow maximum turn speed. The thumbsticks are given a large dead zone and an obnoxiously high minimum turn speed. In a game where enemies can be very bullet spongy if you don't go for headshots, or if you just find yourself wanting to stick to longer range gunfights and stay behind cover, you need to have some level of precision aiming and the game just really fights you on being able to get that. And so, when you add in that a lot of the game is kind of dark, and the enemies are dark, and it can be very difficult to pick the enemies out from the background, you'll find that at a decent distance, like anything past mid-range, you just start trying to abuse the uh, snap-to-target mechanic to get the level of precision you need and to find enemies. And that's just not the most fun. So in a game that's a lot about shooting, it hurts not to have solid shooting mechanics. PC-only players who've never had the displeasure of this kind of issue, I'd liken it to the console version of really shitty mouse acceleration. But it's not all combat. Often your crew is even given the chance to case the location before masking up and beginning illicit activities. When you do mask up, you can sometimes prevent anyone from calling for help. That is, if you can neutralize the guards, managers, and observant civilians, all of them are ready to call the cops or set off the alarm in just a few short seconds. The game is at one of its high points when you've got one player standing in plain sight without a mask on, only there to alert his masked teammate who's picking a lock that a patrolling guard is about to walk around the corner and he should be ready to go ahead and stop picking that lock and use his silenced pistol to eliminate the unsuspecting guard. But if you do mess up, and this is one of my favorite parts of this game's design, it's not over if you just mess up the stealth section. Instead, it's just time to start defending against the waves and waves of cops that are going to come after you. Now, granted, the more you got done while you were in stealth, before they called the cops, the better off you're going to be because the cops are going to have less time to escalate things, and you're going to get out before that fourth or fifth wave finally hits when they start bringing in the really heavy SWAT guys and things get really difficult. So, stealth is just... The more you can get done, the better off you're going to be, but it's not absolutely necessary. Now, certain options may become closed to you in some missions if you lose stealth, but again, you aren't immediately failing everything just because you alerted the guards. 
What can become an issue is when someone screws up. One of your three friends just did something stupid. You, you'd never do anything stupid, would you? No, but you lost your stealth. And you gotta try and learn from that stuff. Try to avoid it. At the same time, you wanna... If it was really something stupid, you have to blame the person. Be like, hey, don't do that again. And so the group dynamics can get a little strange. So, for example, your friend happened to bump into an electric fence, which then just set his itchy trigger finger off, and he dumped the entire magazine magazine from his assault rifle, and uh, the biker gang in the house you were trying to sneak into, who had the stuff you were trying to steal from them, become alerted, and instead they burn all the stuff you were there to steal from them. And you look at the guy just like, why did you hit the fence? It's like, you didn't tell me not to. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, I actually can't blame you for that. So it's stuff like that. You know, why did you screw up? I didn't see the security camera. Or the other guard came around the corner and he wasn't marked. So stuff like this. The game actually makes stealth fairly challenging, that's why you get rewarded for completing at least some stuff successfully in stealth. It's like so many of these team games, you need to at least have some agreement on what objectives you're going for, and those shouldn't really compete with each other. Uh, and when things do go wrong, well, that's just something you're going to have to work out. Enough about stealth. The combat most closely reminds me of Halo 1. Yeah, that's a weird comparison, but it's because you've got a large, quickly regenerating shield, and then a fairly sizable, as well, health pool that doesn't regenerate. So you're worried about going ahead and getting in a fight, and then once your shield is almost down or completely down, you take cover, wait for it to regenerate, and then pop back out. Unlike Left 4 Dead, your character will accumulate cash and level up as you finish jobs, getting your payday, as it were. When you finish jobs, you'll also be given a random item, either mask-related or weapon attachment, or possibly cash. Now, note that the mask-related items are consumed when you combine them together to make a new mask, or weapon attachments are actually considered attached to the weapon, so if you want a suppressor on a couple different guns to switch between, you'll either need multiple of that same attachment, or you'll need to pay to have it taken off and pay to put it back on again every time you want to switch where that attachment is located. Again, and they're random. I forget how many of those electro center patterns I have, but I know that as of level 48, I still don't have an optic for any of my weapons. It's kind of annoying, always using iron sights. This does avoid the, this is the exact loadout you want to use, this is the best, so you should use this and don't worry about anything else kind of scenario, because you may not have access to that particular loadout. And so you, you see a variety of things and you just have to make do with what you've got. And especially for the masks, it means there's lots of randomization and it, you see lots of different stuff and people have just have fun with the masks. But especially for the attachments, it gets really annoying when you can't get anything like what you want. And a lot of the attachments, you may get unlock an attachment early on for a gun that you can by no means afford for many, many more levels. For example, I got an extended mag attachment early on for a secondary pistol, making it a great choice of secondary for me, but not so good for the rest of my crew who didn't have that attachment. The thing is, it really encourages you to farm these quick jobs for paydays to try to get that randomized loot, uh, just based on the game's random number generator. Earlier I gave an example of teamwork where one player was alerting his friend as to a guard's patrolling pattern. And that's a great use of teamwork, but other times where the game forces you to use teamwork, it feels much, much more contrived. I should first mention the game's four different skill trees. Mastermind, Enforcer, Technician, and Ghost. And they all have their own equipment and you can only carry one piece of equipment, so first aid kits, ammo kits, uh, explosives, sentry guns, uh, ECM, all of those you can only carry one, and you have to spend at least one point to spec into the skill tree, but you can be spec'd into multiple skill trees at the same time. Now, since I have several friends to play with, each of us have mostly just been specking heavily into one skill tree in order to get some of the later pretty badass skills, and eventually we'll go back and fill in some of the other ones. 
Now, when we first started playing Payday 2, we found that we had plenty of skill points, but not a lot of cash. Cash is what lets you spend skill points. You buy new weapons that you unlock, uh, buy the attachments that you randomly get, and we just didn't have enough money to do much of anything, and so a lot of the early game was spent with the starter assault rifle and nothing else, because I didn't have any more money. Later on, I found that I have more money than I know what to do with, and it's skill points instead that I'm short on. And you get more skill points for leveling up, but by the mid-40s, it really, really slows down. Now that, and the more advanced skills, taking more skill points instead of 1 for the basic, 3 for the ace version of the skill, you go to 4 for the basic, 8 for the ace, and so suddenly you end up in a situation where you've got more than enough money, and suddenly skill points are the limiting factor, and this happens really, really quickly, and so I'd say the pacing of the game is fairly off. And it, it's actually somewhat annoying because you go from having to use the same guns to suddenly, well, do I actually want to spend another half million dollars to respect my skill tree? Now that's not really that big a problem for me, it's just that now my crew's different skills are now not what they're expecting them, and so maybe I just, uh, our group no longer has some skills that we thought we had, and I've just doubled up on some other stuff that we don't really need more than one of, and it gets really awkward, and that's why when you get into situations where I just wish I had a couple from here and a couple from here for this occasion, it can get really annoying and contrived. So when I talk about contrived teamwork, that's where if you just had one person with a few more skill points, they could do the job of two or three or heck, maybe even all four people. But instead, you've just got several people walking around basically right on top of each other, clipping into each other, who are just taking turns uh, in the same place doing things. Well, the great example is the Payday 2 video I previously posted of a framing frame run we did in Stealth. And in that run, the three of us were walking around basically right next to each other because that was the only way that made sense. One of us with the quietest suppressed pistol, best chance of taking out guards without alerting the other ones and losing stealth. Another one to answer the downed guards pager. And then a third player to go ahead and bag the body and move it so that the other patrolling guards don't find it. Now, in reality, if one player just had the right attachments, because the random way attachments are awarded, and skill points, one person could have done all of that. But instead, it took three of us just walking around, basically right behind each other, and it felt really, really contrived. Speaking of contrived things, the writing and the voice acting in this game, well, it's... It's bad, frankly, and it's one of those things where you can tell it just lacks the polish of a AAA game, although Black Ops 2 had some cringeworthy moments in there too. Anyway, there's just all sorts of stuff they probably should have brought an editor in on, just things like ECM Jammer, the electronic countermeasure jammer, no, it's it's ah no <laughs> there's all sorts of stuff like that that just like you gotta you gotta overlook it and just go ahead and have fun with the game the ai for example not good for much of anything it'll shoot at guards it'll pick you up off the ground if you go into a down state it's got that standard down to recover with the teammate mechanic but the ai won't carry equipment won't uh, high hostages won't carry loot back to the getaway van the only real advantage to the AI is it predictably doesn't do anything, and you can leave without it. So, uh, if you need to ditch a human player who's just not cooperative, at least the AI won't get you into trouble, and it's not exactly helpful. But the biggest issue with the game is the lack of mission variety and the mission selection. Now, there are several things going on here. First, there aren't a whole lot of missions out there. And in some cases, especially that bank, is reused four different times. And so it can... Yes, there is some uh, some randomness there, and some slightly different conditions each time, but it's pretty much the same thing, and there isn't a lot of variety. The other thing becomes, uh, even though they have some way to scale the difficulty, mostly dealing with how many cops they send after you, or how many bags of loot you need to pick up, or some of the other little things like that, uh, in the end... Some of the basic missions are too easy and you don't want to bother doing them again, and some of them are really hard and you're really going to want 
all four players to be uh, communicating and working together even at the more basic difficulty levels. Uh, there are some that just require you to get some stuff right and uh, messing up leads to even worse trouble on future days of the same job. Uh, for example, <laughs> there's one mission where you are cooking meth in the middle of trying to hold off a police assault and if you mess up the entire lab explodes. You have to run and you don't have your meth to exchange for intel on day two of the job. <laughs> so if you have a random who uh, screws that procedure up, then suddenly you've got another two days of jobs that are just going to be a mess to deal with. The other issue is that some jobs don't take long at all and you'll get that quick payday and you'll get some cash. And other jobs can take five, ten times as long, and you'll make less money. It partly has to do with the difficulty scaling, but there are some jobs that just under a minute, you're done, and you got a good chunk of cash and a random item. And it's like, oh, I'm going to go do a bunch of those because I'm going to try and farm that stuff. <laughs> uh, I don't think farming, <laughs> farming jobs is really that appealing to me. So is Payday 2 a game you should look at picking up? Well, ultimately, I'd say it comes down to do you have at least two or more friends who want to get together for the leveling up, the shooting guns, unlocking new skills and attachments, covering each other, and otherwise working on perfecting the heist? Because <laughs> that's what it's about. And you're going to come back and do pretty much the same job again with some minor variations. Yeah, there's some variety in what you're doing in the setup, and I appreciate that. It's not always just robbing banks. Sometimes you're robbing people. Sometimes you're setting them up with uh, coke and taking their gold. You know, else they got some different stuff in there. Keeps up some variety. But in general, you're going to be doing pretty much the same thing. It's not a blockbuster, it's got a limited scope, and it is flawed in a lot of ways, but again, the strong pacing with those waves, and a reasonable way they do stealth, I think is a great framework for setting up a good time with friends in a co-op game. That's all for my review. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, I'll see you guys next time, and now it's time to make my escape.